Hey friends, welcome to Hot News. Great Thursday that we're having here, because it's not even Thursday, it's Wednesday, my dudes. Anyways, let's talk about today's video sponsor, which is actually Floatplane, because we're over on Floatplane with both the UFD Tech Channel as well as Hot News, where you can get pre-release content. Videos come out there earlier than they do over on YouTube, but then also there are no ad spots such as this one. So you can check us out at the link in the video description to subscribe on Floatplane. You get no ads, no sponsor spots from us, and you get videos ahead of time. It's a win-win. We actually have two unreleased videos on Floatplane right now from the UFD Tech Channel. If you subscribe now, you have access to it. So go check it out at the link in the video description. Well, let's move on into the topics of today, which is things that you can't have access to, which is if you have a MacBook Pro, and let's say you wanna fly. Well, apparently the FAA says nay. You get no flying, okay? You're not allowed to fly with your MacBook Pro 2015 because you're gonna explode and take out the entire plane with you. It's a no-no because of the battery issues that have been experienced in the recent uh, MacBook Pro recalls. They are just banning these devices outright altogether. Uh, my question, however, then is how would like the TSA or anybody at flight security know the difference between the 2015 MacBook Pro and a 2016 MacBook Pro or know the difference between the ones that have the battery recall issue and the ones that don't? I'm not sure necessarily how this is enforceable in a really great grand way, but uh, this is just the Galaxy Note 7 all over again. Samsung, we haven't forgotten about you. You exploded, stop it, and you can't fold. How exactly you're gonna transport your MacBook from one part of the country to another or one part of the world to another uh, remains to be seen. Maybe you shouldn't have bought an Apple product and you're just paying the comeuppance. Or alternatively, you should actually just get it recalled and change out the battery so that you can fly with it. Then let's talk about some US-China trade war goodness, at least goodness on some aspect. It wasn't a subjective statement, it was just me saying words, okay? Anyways, it looks like the US is actually gonna push off implementing some of the tariffs that they were anticipating implementing on September 1st. Instead, they're gonna wait until December 15th because don't you know, Americans don't wanna pay 10% more on their smartphones right before the holiday season. That's the worst time. Do it after the holiday season, or actually, if you're doing it on December 15th, all you're doing is punishing all of the people who waited to the last minute to buy gifts. This is the perfect way to make sure people like you who wait until the last minute, Jimmy, you actually can pay the price for your laziness. And then let's talk about some AMD news because there is some information coming out about some next generation APUs that would come to the mobile platform. So as a replacement for the Picasso APUs that are currently out there, which have Zen Plus CPUs with Vega graphics, the Renoir, 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 Renoir. Anyways, that's gonna have Zen 2 CPUs with Vega graphics. So this actually isn't the APU that we're currently looking for from AMD with Zen 2 CPU and Navi GPU. This is actually still going to be a Vega based setup and supposed to be coming in 2020. Uh, but it looks like Vega could be based on seven nanometers. It might be faster than the current Vega lineup, but this is again for mobile and not exactly the APUs that we're going for, such as an eight core chiplet which would be amazing. Eight core, 16 threads on one chiplet, and then a really decent Navi GPU on the second. That would be lovely. AMD, that's what we're waiting for. And then just a slight bit more about AMD graphics news. Uh, they have quietly, silently released the RX 600 series, my friends. If you want an RX 640, congratulations. You can pick one up. It's the previous RX 550X, which is the previous RX 550 because the X was added for OEMs and apparently the OEM rerun this time is just going 600 series. So you have the RX 640, 630, 625, 620, and 610. So it's just a lame rebadge. Thanks AMD. And in case you're wondering which antivirus you should be using on your computer, well look no further because the one that's included with Windows 10 is so perfect. Perfection. Apparently in an antivirus, uh, gather around to see which one's the best, Windows, Defender scored six out of six points in all of the categories tested and was dubbed the perfect antivirus. It's better than everything that you're paying for. Why use anything else? But as Jason says, the best antivirus is smart brain usage. Don't click on shady links, friends. Or if you do, make sure you do it on a friend's computer. Or if you don't have a friend, just make sure you do it in a sandbox environment, like on a uh, emulated machine. With virtual machine is what I'm trying to say. I don't have friends. I got family. Let's talk about Final Fantasy because there's a new Final Fantasy movie out. But as it was discovered by everybody else in the office, it's not a movie that's about Final Fantasy, it's a movie about Final Fantasy because it's a father-son playing Final Fantasy XIV together. It's actually supposed to be really good. It's called Brave Father Online. Maybe check it out, consider that. 
Anyways, you want to build a PC? Guess what? You're in luck. You can do it anywhere, all the time, on the go, in your car, in the plane. You can build a PC anywhere now because PC Builder Simulator is now available on consoles, including the Nintendo Switch. You can pick it up for $20. The irony of building a PC on a PlayStation 4 is not lost on me, and I'm totally going to buy the game for my PlayStation. And apparently, OnePlus is coming out with a TV, and it's going to be called the OnePlus TV. So that's great. Hopefully it's not a streaming service because OnePlus TV could indicate streaming service to me, but it, it, it's probably a television. I don't know why we need a OnePlus television, but we need more smart TVs in the world. You know what we need less of though is Oculus founders at Facebook. And that's exactly what we got because Nate Mitchell, one of the Oculus co-founders, he, he went bye-bye. Facebook just alienating everybody that they acquire. Oculus but from Facebook. Instagram from Facebook. WhatsApp from Facebook. F1 from AMD and Nvidia. So this is actually a pretty decent story. F1 2019, the Formula One racing game, is the first game to feature both AMD's Fidelity FX graphics uh, processing as well as NVIDIA's DLSS image processing. So it's the first game to bring both of them together. However, not without some controversy because apparently the DLSS implementation from NVIDIA wasn't working properly. So they pulled it for now and they'll bring it back later. So it was the first and now it's not, but it will be again. In case you like to play with graphics on in Linux, and you have Intel integrated graphics, apparently there's a new Mesa improvement that can give you up to 20% better performance. Speaking of better performance, don't you like fast cars? Don't you like driving to great soundtracks? Well, all of that's in the past, and now we have leaks of the new Need for Speed Heat is what it's gonna be called. Apparently, uh, the actual official announcement should happen before this hot news episode is released. <laughs> but not before we're filming. So there might be more detail out. We'll cover that tomorrow. But Need for Speed Heat looks like it's gonna be, I love this picture that's right here. That Corvette, mm, looking so sexy. I love it. It's like a cyberpunk Need for Speed vibe. It's also made by EA, so we'll see how it goes. But the 2015 Need for Speed didn't really have microtransactions, so like, some hope and if you want hope for your phone well samsung might be bringing it to you with the galaxy s12 because there's indication that they would be using graphene battery technology in their uh two generations from now smartphones to allow for faster charging better capacities and just a better phone experience overall or they won't do it because it's too expensive or they're gonna start selling $2,000 phones that aren't foldable. Speaking of wasting money though, on things like a $1,000 phone, you can waste money on Coca-Cola and still get League of Legends points because apparently the cheapest way to get Riot points or RP from League of Legends is to buy this Turkish version of Coca-Cola where the drinks actually come with RP and it's cheaper than buying them on the game directly. What is this bamboozle? Speaking of bamboozles, Verizon is actually suing the city of Rochester in order to get away with not paying 5G fees and saying that the FCC is on their side and that they're gonna make sure that uh, they are not gonna pay any fees. FCC doesn't like it, Verizon's suing you, Rochester. And then a cool bit of news, this, is, this one's a little bit fun. There was an individual in California who decided, hey, let me play a little prank in getting a vanity license plate known as NULL, N-U-L-L, -L, which in case you don't know, that's usually like an error code in programming where like there's no defined, so it's just, it's NULL. Anyways, he got a parking ticket, and so every time somebody else got some sort of violation in the system but didn't have a license plate, it went to NULL, which was now registered to his address because he got a parking ticket and he ended up getting over $12,000 in fines. All of them besides one, not his, because he decided to be a little prankster, got nothing. But you can get something if you own an original Google Pixel and you had an issue with the microphone. Apparently the class action lawsuit payment is live and you can get up to $500 for your original Pixel. That's amazing. You can buy a Pixel 3a for that. And then in a terrible bit of news, Viacom and CBS are agreeing to merge, creating a $30 billion company. It kind of seems like an inevitability given that Disney is buying up everybody and you have to merge and consolidate in order to compete with the juggernaut that is the giant rat king. We'll see how it goes. I don't like it. I don't like these giant companies merging. We're gonna be one giant oligarchy. Oh wait, we already are. And then let's talk about a YouTube redesign that is apparently being tested out at this point. Instead of giving you a whole bunch of small thumbnails on your desktop, top where you have four in a row, they are apparently trialing TV size thumbnails so that you actually only get two in a row. So larger thumbnails to attract more attention 
and then could also reveal some of the things that we've been hiding in our thumbnails because we realize that they're going to be viewed at a small size, so we don't worry about it. But now that they're going to be blown up, we actually have to correct them. Thanks, YouTube. Much appreciated. You know what else is appreciated? Me ending this episode of Hot News because I'm done. You're done. We're all good friends here. Don't forget to check us out on Floatplane where this episode of Hot News has already been live for a little bit and you didn't have to hear me talk about Floatplane. Also, hit the like button if you enjoyed the video. Get subscribed to stay up to date on all of our news related content. This is on the UFD Tech channel, I believe. I don't remember. We'll find out once it goes live. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Bye. I'm bald. Or it's the biggest insult to your parents who got you a console for Christmas and all you do is play PC Builder Simulator and you're like, look what you made me do!